Hello again. This is um, just a short video to answer some of those frequently asked questions, concerns that people might have ahead of their hypnotherapy session, and also to, to puncture a few urban myths about hypnotherapy. I suppose the place to start with this might be what you won't find. When you come to see me, you definitely won't encounter any swinging watches, and certainly won't get any of that. Look into my eyes, you're feeling very sleepy. Look, that's a nonsense but I suppose in fairness that's, that's uh, how it used to be 40 years ago. But this is the stuff from bad 1960s films, right? And anybody who's still practicing hypnotherapy and indulging in that nonsense really needs to have a word with themselves. The point is, basically what this is about control, isn't it? People have a fear about will they be handing over their control. Now, I don't have any interest whatsoever in, in being in control of you. When you think about that, if you come to see me because you've got an issue or a, of a behaviour or a compulsion or whatever over which you currently feel that you've got no control, how can I possibly help you to gain that control, to feel in control and in control of your own choices, if the first thing I ask you to do is to hand over all control to me? That's a nonsense. I don't have a magic wand. I don't have any magical powers. What I do have is access to a series of tools and techniques which can help guide you to your solution state. And that's my job, really. I'm a tour guide. You know, I might be suggesting, you're still the one, I might be one giving directions, but you're still the one driving the car, okay? My job is to use your evidence, because it's your evidence that's important, your evidence of a felt change, your evidence that's important, because when you walk out the door, you're the person that needs to take that evidence with you. So it's not about me and it being in control. It's very much about you and about you being in control of your own life. Questions. What's the difference between a hypnotist and a hypnotherapist? Well, a stage hypnotist, uh, you've probably got to see one on that, you know, um, <clears throat> what they do is for entertainment purposes. They go into a room full of people, they, as quickly as they can, they do some suggestibility tests to find the most suggestible people, the most receptive to, to what we call a somnambulistic trance. Um, that's about 10% of the population. I personally have never been in a somnambulistic trance. You know that, right? Where you don't know where you are. It's very rare. But they get these people, the end dance like chickens, etc., etc. Everybody has a good laugh and they go away home happy. Okay? Um, a hypnotherapist is somebody who uses the state of hypnosis to guide people to a solution state. It, you know, to, to go into a therapeutic process of change. It's an ethical therapeutic intervention. It's got nothing to do with entertainment and nothing to do with you giving up your control. Can anyone be hypnotised? Pretty much yes, because if you want to be. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. Now, that just sounds like a, a catchphrase, doesn't it? So I'll explain. How many times in, have you been engrossed in a, a movie or a book and you suddenly you don't realise the passage of time? Or when you were a child, how many times have you playing with your friends and hours have gone by, you're two hours late for your dinner and your parents are going bananas, but you're unaware of it because you've been in this little daydream, this little trance. When you're driving your car and you think, oh, where have I been for the last few minutes? Well, you know where you've been. You've been driving your car on autopilot perfectly safely while well, your mind's elsewhere. You know, it's just something that you do automatically. So. If anything happens, such as a car stopping in front of you or somebody coming out in front of you, and you're back in, in an instant. So, what I'm saying is that state of the daydream, that's the kind of the depth of trance that's necessary for effective long term therapeutic change. Okay, um, can I make you do something you don't want to? Well, I've already said I'm not interested in that, but no is the answer. And I'll explain it in, in, once again. My experience tells me that if you come to see me, or if you're considering coming to see me, it's because you're not very good at doing what you're told, even by yourself. Because often people are coming to us and say, oh, I keep saying to myself, you've got to stop doing this, or you've got to start doing that. But if you don't respond to being told well to being told what to do by yourself, why would you respond any better at being told what to do by me? I once went to see a hypnotist for smoking years ago, and they give me this uh, relaxation thing, and I've been listening to it, and I think every time I listened to it, it got to the bit where like, he said, you will do this because I say so, 
And I would just jolt. Because it's not helpful. It's not effective and you won't get it from me. Will I remember what happens? Why wouldn't you? You know, you're going to be sat in that chair over there. With your eyes closed, making a few pictures and relaxing. Why wouldn't you remember everything? Can I get stuck in a trance? No. Look, this is, this is the stuff of, of bad 60s films again, isn't it? Um, my insurance, my professional indemnity insurance, which covers me for millions of pounds, costs me the princely sum of £64 per year. Now, the insurance industry is not known, is it, for being a soft touch and being benefactors. They've assessed the risks of hypnotherapy. There are thousands of people practicing hypnotherapy. Um, and the risks are so minimal that it's barely worth the cost of them writing out the policy. So, if it's good enough to the insurance industry, it will do for me. Um, is hypnosis safe? Well, let's be clear. If you're a beautiful princess who lives in far, far away land, and you've got a wicked stepmother that's always lurking in the background, plotting against you, then perhaps you should be careful about who you enter into hypnosis with. Other than that, you'll be grand. Okay? Are there any side effects? Yes, hopefully. The side effects of you coming to see me and entering into this hypnotic contract is that you will leave feeling a lot more in control of your life and of your behaviour and a lot happier within yourself and at peace within yourself. That's what the side effects should be. Other than that, they shouldn't be any. I hope that's answered some of your concerns. Um, if you've got any more, just give me a ring. I'll be happy to talk them through with you. Okay, thanks for listening.